Welcome back to Movie Masters. Today we're talking about the T1.5 Samyang 35mm Cine Lens. And when I say T1.5, and I've said this before in my other videos, but if in case you haven't watched them, which you should, the T is what we use on Cine Lenses instead of the F-stop. So you could say it's an F1.5, but no, it's a T1.5, 35mm Cine Lens. But the question is, is it a real Cine Lens? And is it any good? And does it being a real cine lens make any difference to the quality of this lens? Because I will admit this is a very quality lens at a very affordable price. Before we get into that, I'll explain what makes a cine lens. So all the cine lenses, yes I know, I've done that a few times, all the cine lenses have a 95 millimeter diameter around the circumference of the rim. And the reasoning for that is because matte boxes are made at a diameter of 95 millimeters. It's just a quick changeover. So the industry standard is 95 millimeters. So other than that, and it being made out of plastic, would I would I say that it, that is really the only difference? And it's cheap. It's it's very cheap. So you can buy these things online in Australia for just under nine hundred dollars. That's right, nine hundred dollars for your Sydney lens. Now, a few of the differences. So this does have a slightly smaller diameter, coming in at seventy-seven millimeters compared to the traditional ninety-five. So they may fit into the category of a micro cine lens. So does it make it any less better? Now I have several budget micro cine lenses and let's start with the Vedra Mini Prime. Here you will get like a full solid metal body, just really high quality lens, but it is small. Doesn't make it any less better. It just, you know, is smaller on your camera. And then you have say something like the Seven Artisans 35 millimeter. Now this has a bit more of a traditional cine lens look, but it still doesn't come out at the 95 millimeter. Now this has an 82 millimeter thread, so it's still quite not a true cine lens. Or you can get something a little more budget like the Helios 442. Back to talking about the Samyang. So I've actually owned this for about a year now. It was my first cine lens. And I gotta say, I absolutely love this thing. It is made of a plastic of sorts, but I still find the build quality is quite reasonable. I actually really like the size of this lens. And I'm sure that you filmmakers know, not that it matters, <laughs> but when you rock up to a job, you come with a smaller lens and people will treat you differently. If you rock up to a job and then, you know, stick one of these bad boys on in your rigged out kit, people are gonna be like, wow, he's professional. Lame. Like, it doesn't make any difference to the quality. Does look a little cooler. You know, I like to have a big lens. I like to put a big lens on my camera, but sometimes I like a small lens too. <laughs> I can't keep a straight face. We're getting off topic. So back to the lens, it has a nice smooth, focus pull, a nice wide aperture T1.5 and great quality pictures and it's big. But as I say with my other reviews, let's just look at some of the footage. and you can decide for yourself if you want it. I should mention it's 
full frame and that's pretty exciting because I've been filming most of my things on my FX30 and now that I've got the A7C it works on my crop sensor and it also works on my full frame sensor. So I think for the price of under 900 Australian dollars, that's about 550 US, you can get a full frame cine lens, a big full frame cine lens. And because of what it's made of, it's lighter than the Seven Artisans 35, and it's longer, <laughs> and it's almost as thick. It's a nice girth. Now we all love a nice big lens to impress our clients, to show off our, um, our big lens power. Anyway. I hope you found this video informative and enjoyable. Hit that like and subscribe button and we'll see you next time.